Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, bringing you another action-packed adventure of Superman. Uh, last time we left our heroes, Clark Kent was getting into a little bit of a, of a firefight. We're going to find out what um, happens as he approaches the mysterious cabin in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, I do want to share with you, we got a comment on iTunes. A about right. I started listening to Adam's Dragnet podcast, and then I heard about this one, and I had to try it out. Needless to say, I'm now hooked on both podcasts. Keep up the good work, Adam, and good luck with your new uh, old-time radio detective podcast. Well, thank you very much for the comment, and that actually... Uh, pushed us up to having enough ratings to show up on iTunes in terms of our ratings. So thank you so much. It's much appreciated. I uh, also encourage you to cast your vote with, uh, for us on Podcast Alley. Got any comments? Feel free to email me uh, at uh, adam at adamsweb.us. Oh, and by the way, that detective show is at greatdetectives.net. Um, and go over to our show notes site at Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us, where we're going to have uh, mon Monday a brand new chapter in the Order of the Sword series. You won't want to miss it. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into Dr. Deutsch and the Radium Mine Part 3. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. And now to our story. When we last saw Clark Kent, he and the Secret Service man, Lewis, and an old caretaker were approaching a small shack on the edge of a cove. Lewis had separated from them and was advancing toward the shack along the beach. Kent and the caretaker were taking a narrow, tree-shaded path through the brush. Darkness hangs low over the water... And the silence is broken only by the shrill chirping of crickets. How many men did you say you saw pushing that car into the water? Well, I didn't say, mister. I recollect there was two. Uh -huh. They waited till she sunk, and then they went into the shack. I've got a feeling that maybe it's them foreign fellas who was using the big house on the cliff. You know about them, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, that's why I stopped you on the road to tell you. Uh -huh. I figured you was government fellas. There's been a whole parcel of them roaming around the big house. Yeah. Uh, we better go easy now. We're nearing the shack. Where's that secret service feller? Well, I can't see him from here, but he's approaching the shack from the beach. Hmm? Are we about as close as we can get now without busting in? See anything? No, not a thing. I'll try the door. You better be careful, mister. Drop down! Uh, I'm hit, mister! Oh, easy now, take it easy. I knew it. I knew there'd be trouble. Oh, where were you hit? Uh. Here. Right here. Oh, over the heart. That's bad. I'll get you to a doctor. Don't worry. Now, you'll be all right. No, I can't move. Steady now. I won't last long. Not very long. Not very. Oh, he's gone. I suppose I should tear into that shack at Superman and make them pay for this. But that wouldn't get me what I want. Deutsch may be the brains of this gang, but I need him to lead me to the rest of them. I wonder where Lewis is. He must have heard those shots. That should bring him running. Oh, probably shooting at him, too. Well, I've got to get inside that shack as Clark Kent. It's the only way I can learn anything. I give up. Stop shooting. Come forward with your hands in the air. All right. He had you covered with two guns. Don't try any funny work. Stop where you are. Open the door, Hans. Huh? Put the gun in his back. Bring him in. Go ahead, Doctor. Go ahead. Inside. All right. Turn on the light, Hans. I have him covered. I won't. I have him covered. I won't. So, Herr Kent, 
Again, we have the honor of entertaining you, eh? Huh? But this time, the circumstances are slightly different, no? The circumstances don't matter, Dr. Deutsch. It's always a pleasure to see you. That, Herr Kent, is what you call sarcastic. I would suggest that you dispense with the clever remarks. Oh. How many men are with you? I'm all alone. You lie. We saw three men get out of the car. We are not stupid, Mr. Kent. Well, since you know how many there were, why ask me? Because I choose to, and I expect an answer. Where is the third man? The third? You heard me. We have accounted for you as the Secret Service man, Lewis. Where is the third? Well, if you must know, you murdered him. He's out there in front of the shack. Who is he? Just a harmless old man, a local resident. Well, he is certainly harmless now, even if he was not before. I... Keep your hands up. Search him, Hans. Edison Bobotner. Good. You may lower your hands, Mr. Kent. Thank you. Keep a sharp look out at the window, Hans. Yeah. Well, you've got quite a setup here, Dr. Deutsch. Shortwave sending and receiving set, photographic apparatus... And what's that big control board with all the fancy dials? That is none of your business, Herr Kent. Oh. You know, by all that is right, I should shoot you down like a dog. Well, what are you waiting for? You've got the gun. No. You are worth more alive than dead. At least for the present. I have a few scores to set you, and you will help me set the gun. Really? Yes, really. After that is done... You will suffer the penalty of having interfered with my plans. I suppose Mr. Lewis will suffer the same penalty. There is no question about that. Hmm? Where is he? In a safe place. But enough of these questions. I will ask a few. I understand Miss Lane met with an accident. Is that true? No. No, it isn't. Fortunately, we found the bomb in time. Huh? Hans. You hear that? Yeah, Doctor. I hear it. That is too bad. We will have to devise another method. What is that? A storm, Herr Doctor. Contact Schmidt by radio. Tell him we will send the plane over within the hour. Yes, yeah, Herr Doctor. You must have quite an organization, Deutsch. More than you can imagine, Herr Kent. That is why we cannot lose. You will see shortly how well organized we are. But first, let me have the papers from your pocket. What for? Never mind. Give them to me. All right. Here they are. You have here what is called a police card with your signature on it? Yes. Good. Well, Hans? The tubes are booming, Doctor. I will call him now. Six, four, nine. I'm open. Six, four, nine. I'm open. Six, four, nine. I'm open. With Kent, a willing captive, in order to learn more about Deutsch and his gang, and the whereabouts of Lewis a mystery, the little shack on the cove is a scene of tense drama as a storm breaks over it. Meanwhile, back at the Daily Planet office, Lois Lane is still working on the report. Jimmy, you still here? I thought Mr. Kent told you to go home. Well, he told you the same thing, Miss Lane. Well, I have work to do. Now run along home. Well, I'm not tired. Oh, Miss Lane, a messenger just delivered this envelope from Mr. White. It's marked important. Let me see it. Hmm. Editor Perry White, Daily Planet Building. Important. Deliver at once. Now, who could be sending an important message at this hour? When did Mr. White leave, Jimmy? Oh, a long time ago. Well, maybe I'd better open it. Typewritten. Jimmy, it's from Clark Kent. No fooling. Listen. Dear Mr. White, I need your help. Please come at once. I have drawn a map to show you where I will meet you, Clark Kent. Well, there's a map, all right. Gee, what do you think it is, Miss Lane? I don't know, but I think I'd better call the police. Well, oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. If Mr. Kent wanted the police, you would have asked for them. I need your help. Please come at once. I'll call Mr. White. I hate to do it at this hour. Oh, wasn't Mr. Kent supposed to go to the naval base with that Secret Service man? So I understood. Oh, gee, according to this map, he's nowhere near there. Wait a minute. Let me see that map. Good heavens, you know where he is? No, where? About half a mile away from that house on the cliff. The house Dr. Dorse was using as a hideout. There's no answer, Mr. White. Well, I don't know what to do, Jimmy. I know what I'm going to do. What? I'm going down there to help Mr. Kent. Jimmy, don't be silly. Give me that letter, Jimmy. So long, Miss Lane. See you later. Jimmy, Jimmy, come back. Jimmy. Gee, mister, it sure was nice of you to pick me up. This is going to save me a lot of hiking. Where'd you say you were going? To the old ocean road. Yeah? What's down there? Well, I've got to meet a friend of mine. You don't have to take me that far if it's out of your way. Yeah, 
I'm trucking this load of flour into the city, but I ain't in no hurry. I'll drop you off, son. Oh, gee, thanks. Oh, listen to that thunder. There's a storm coming. How's your dog? He's fast asleep in my lap. You know, I just picked him up on the road about an hour ago. When it started thundering, he came running out of the bushes. I guess he was frightened. Yeah, dogs don't like thunder. He's a funny-looking mutt, but I kind of like him. <laughs> I'm going to call him Storm because he came to me on account of the thunderstorm. Hey, feel his ears. They're like silk. Yeah, they are. I never had a dog. But sometimes when you're alone, a dog can be a great friend. Yeah. You like dogs, mister? Yeah, I like them. I had one once, but he got run over. Oh, that's too bad. Look, he's waking up. Hi, Storm, old fella. <laughs> he sure sounds happy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well, we turn in here. Old Ocean Road's up a way. It's a funny place to meet anyone. Well, you see, it's a special friend of mine. Oh, it's all right, Storm. Don't be frightened. <laughs> well, here you are. Old Ocean Road. Oh, thanks a lot, mister. All right. Call out, Storm. Come on, hop down. Atta boy. Yeah, I don't see nobody waiting for you, son. Oh, well, my friend must be around somewhere. I'll find him. Whoop, whoop, Storm, whoop, whoop, come back. Whoop. Hey, Storm. Oh, he ran into the woods. He's chasing the rabbit. I'm going to find him. Storm. Wait, I'll help you look for him. Storm. Hey, Storm. He went that way. Come on, son. Here, Storm. Here, Storm. Well, that ought to bring him back. Oh, I see him. He's down at the water. Maybe he's thirsty. Ah, that's salt water, boy. Hey, what's that big thing down there? What? It's a seaplane. Look the size of it. Yeah, now, what do you suppose a seaplane's doing there? Gee, I don't know. Here, Storm. Here, boy. What about that seaplane your dog likes? Look at him. He hopped up on the wing. Hey, Storm, get down off there. Storm. <laughs> Nothing doing. Look at him. He hopped right into cabin. i got to get him out. Can you lift me up on the wing, please? Mm, I guess so. Don't fall off. That water's plenty deep there. Here, get a grip on my shoulder. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> up you go. Okay. Watch it now, son. Don't slip. Oh, I'm all right. I'll crawl along to the cabin. Join that dog. If he wasn't such a funny-looking mud, I'd leave him here. But nobody else would want him. How you doing? Swell. I'm climbing into the cabin. Storm, where are you? Gosh, it's dark in here. Storm! Oh, where'd he go? Storm! Oh, there you are. Come here, you crazy pooch. Storm, look out. You'll get me. Ouch. Right into the instrument panel. Gosh, what happened? We're taking off. Help. Help. Motors roaring. The giant seaplane skims across the water and rises into the dark, foreboding sky, carrying Jimmy and his dog with it. Is there anyone at the controls of the mysterious plane? And where is it headed? Thrills and excitement are coming, so keep listening. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Well, welcome back. Yeah, that was sure a realistic sounding dog. I, I bought that. Uh, ah, 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 that's my dog, too. <laughs> Actually, it was realistic enough. It scared the cat over there. Um, uh, my wife is thinking the dog started the plane. Uh, I don't quite agree. Uh, the one thing you have to love about Dr. Deutsch is just how plain outspoken obvious he is. Uh, you are going to help me so that then I can kill you. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, but, but, uh, uh, he did, however, slyly detect sarcasm. So maybe they're developing the character a little bit. We'll see next time. All right. Got any comments? Feel free to email me. Adam at adamsweb.us. For the Old Time Radio Superman Show from Boise, Idaho, this is Adam Graham signing off.